Doctor, very good morning to you. Let's start with the basics because everyone's talking about 3D printing, 3D printing you know, around the world and so forth. Explain to us what is 3D printing for the layman? Well, uh, think about it, normal printer, you know, you type your Microsoft web oh. in the print and you go to the printer, you collect that paper. Yeah. What you see is exactly what you are typing on, on that Microsoft web. So it's, it's the fundamentals. 3D printing is the same as that. Mm -hmm. The only difference is you don't need paper. You need uh, things like uh, high-tech lasers and uh, metal powders, or sometimes they use polymers to print whatever artifacts or whatever object you want to make. Yeah. Yeah. So basically you would go through a process of designing a model. For example, if I wanted to print this, I will design this in a CAD computer aided device file and then I will put this slice file in a in a computer, I load it and then I click print and then you see your, your part growing depending on whether you are using a metal or polymers. Uh, and at the end of the day, exactly what you put in a, in a CAD file is exactly what comes out. So, so basically, we are, I can make something by myself at home with a 3D printer? Y yes, of course you can. There are small polymer uh, uh, 3D printers that you can buy for homemade. But the ones that we use uh, at the National Laser Center, you can't have it at home <laughs> because there are safety <laughs> risks, of course. Yes. Uh, and of course, they are high power laser. Uh, so they they are very very risky uh, type machines yeah. but we use them we love them because they can do what we want okay tell me about the the, the time let's say that the, the, these are um, you know uh, examples you brought for us uh, that you've obviously made from your 3d printer here uh, just to show the camera right there this is made by a 3d printer how long will something like this take to make those ones are very rapid to make that's why they are called rapid prototyping yeah so you will typically use a polymer printer to mm -hmm. prototype something that you would want to build with a metal. Remember the two is that the polymers are a bit cheaper on price, so you wouldn't want to play with a titanium, for example, before yeah. you are sure with your qualified design that you want to print. So the, the process is very quick. Um, mm -hmm. You can grow a structure as this big within, um, uh, what, 15 minutes? Then you're out. Okay, you said grow. Is that the, the terminology? Yeah, I mean, we, it's like... Um, it, it, it grows. Yeah. You see this wow. thing from nothing and all of a sudden there's a physical there's structure a physical in structure. front of you. And yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's magic. It's it, it, it really is fascinating. Uh, tell us about the titanium aluminide uh, alloys. Okay. What, what, what's, what, what's the difference there? All right, so uh, the aluminides, uh, yeah. so this is an aluminide I can, I can show you. Yeah. That was grown from a powder mm -hmm. using... Uh, from a powder? Yeah, this, this is the powder. I've brought you some yeah. so that the viewers can see. So yeah, This powder here made this. Using well, that yeah. powder went yeah. into the laser mm -hmm. beam and yeah. then comes out that nice pipe you're holding. Yeah. So that is wow. a titanium aluminide pipe. Uh, there, there's applications we are looking to put uh, these pipes under. You yeah. can use them for magnetic shielding for this uh, type of machines. We, 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 yeah, we, let me we, just hold this up as well. You know, that, yeah, wow. that, that is a jet engine. That's uh, a jet engine? Yes. Made by, <laughs> by, by a 3D so, printer? Yeah, I mean, my research now on titanium aluminides is to make mm -hmm. some of the parts in here so that we reduce weight yeah. of, of these things because uh, you need lesser weight on this airplane so that you become more efficient yeah. when you fly. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, th obviously, you know, the work you're doing, this is not, uh, it, it is commercial, but not in the sense of if I want to mass manufacture a particular product I want to put in stores, it will c is that viable at the moment? Can people do that? Or do we have that capacity when it comes to 3D printing? Well, I mean, the, the role of the AeroSwift machine, for example, built by South Africans for South Africans, was intended for mass building. Mm -hmm. um, so you, we can mass produce uh, parts with the AeroSwift machine. It's a, it's a big, bad um, machine. So mm -hmm. you, you are able to get industrial parts come out of it. And of course that is in line with the recent, uh, our strategy as the CSIR. We want to do the research that translate into 
impact on the industry in South Africa and the world, of course, if we can. Mm -hmm. I yeah. see Airbus uh, actually came to partner with the CSIR and the Aerosuit as well. That was uh, back in 2012. How advanced uh, are we in South Africa here when it comes to 3D printing and some of the work you're doing as compared to the rest of the world? Well, if you look at the footprints in South Africa of where you find these 3D printing machines, uh, they are sort of scattered, mm -hmm. but you get a good feel that the country is, is, is in a good position. And you will have one in, in Free State, yep. many are here in Gauteng, you will have one in Northwest, and you will have Western Cape, uh, they, they also have uh, some machines there. So when it comes to the machine side of things, we are very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And we can do what the world is doing. I mean, AeroSwift is the largest, biggest, fastest machine in the world to date. Uh, and that's not a claim. That, that is okay. exactly what the machine can do. Wow. Um, so in that sense, we, we could be leading. But uh, you have to now look at what the world is doing on the metal side of things, not the printing itself. Mm -hmm. uh, people are starting to develop uh, these metal powders that are 3D printable. Remember, you don't just get a metal like this and you 3D print it. You have to first custom make it yeah. so you can 3D print it. Doctor, the last question for you. What are the possibilities? Where are you aiming to go with all this technology? Where are we going to end up in 10 years' time? Well, first and foremost, we have to do what we call return in investment because the research that we do has to, is being funded by government. Um, so we have to now make sure that all those things that we do, they, they become commercial and then the public can see where their money uh, went, uh, the investment. Mm -hmm. So we want to industrialize uh, uh, those things. We want to save uh, clients such as the mining industries because these 3D printing machines, they can actually not just make parts, we can also repair parts that have been used that are no longer in service. Wow. We can reclaim them refurbish them and put them back again uh, and uh, things continue and but also we have to grow the timber of, of academia in this subject matter it's growing in the world uh, and I'm happy that the center we come from the National Laser Center with the African Laser Center they we, we, we are just concentrated on literally growing the African timber where we we run summer schools once a year where graduate students come and Eventually, once they have gone through the summer schools, they can come to the National Laser Center to do their experiments. And we do this across Africa. Wow. So that, that, that is the beauty of all this whole thing. Okay, so the possibilities are endless. Thank they you so endless. much. Thank you so much, CSI. Our researcher, Dr. Muna Metutleng, focuses on laser materials processing using uh, 3D printing. Amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing.